Welcome back to Turn Down for What, your source for EV news and updates. Like and subscribe for more content like this episode. Let's dive on in. Well, welcome guys to a impromptu special segment of Turn Down for What. Uh, wanted to check in on uh, bearded Tesla guy uh, Justin, who wanted to. Uh, I know he's been hopping around, wanted to make sure he wasn't stranded. I see you in motion, so somewhere you've gotten a squirrel to run around fast enough that you've gotten some electrons in there. Uh, what is the the latest? Where are you? Man, it's been wild. And by the way, thanks to Starlink, um, we're able to do this, and it has saved me several times. I will give you some examples, but it's the perfect time to remind people that thanks to you guys, um, there is a Starlink being given away on September 21st. And uh, for details to that, you got to check out the other podcast, which will be linked, I'm sure, below this video. Then you can uh, win one for free, thanks to the guys that uh, turned down for what. Yeah, we'll link it. Uh, we'll link it in the comments or in the uh, description, and we'll get links to all the profiles and uh, the post on X for you guys to drop that you have subscribed to uh, Bearded Tesla Guy and Turn Down for Watt podcast, and then uh, there'll be my information in there as well as Raphael's uh, also to subscribe to his channel. So we'll throw it all in there, and uh, I know we'd love to have you guys all subscribe. But the main thing is Bearded Tesla Guy and Turn Down for Watt grow the channels. We're gonna give away a star link later this month. Uh, tell us how it has worked for you. Yeah, dude, this Starlink is like clutched. And um, I'm in the Canadian Rockies right now, which would be impossible to talk to you at this moment. I'm getting, I'm inching closer to civilization as we speak. So hopefully by late, late, late tonight, I'll actually be uh, where there's consistent power and cell phone service and all the wonderful the lights of normal everyday life but until then uh starlink for the win for sure i've i've lived off of starlink now for two weeks essentially and yeah. uh man it's been clutch crazy thing though so you know we'll go into the story here in a bit but when the cyber truck goes below five percent the outlets shut off automatically on the truck so it's a it's a it's a safety thing you know and in that moment, um, you lose Starlink, which is a bummer yeah. because uh, you can't make this story up of everything that just went bad and wrong. And I needed Starlink desperately. So by the time I, I got things sorted, I was able to pull out the old trusty Anchor F3800 that I brought with me and and uh, daisy chain some extension cords and got Starlink up to save the day there too. I mean, how, how much are you going to hug that first Tesla supercharger when you get back to one of those? Dude, I've, I've already pictured in my head, what's this video going to look like? How much is too cringe? And <laughs> it's going to be like a homecoming for sure. I am, I cannot yeah. wait. Uh, by hopefully midnight tonight, I will be at a Tesla supercharger finally. And yeah, over, I this nightmare i just i have uh like thoughts of wayne's world in my head where like instead of the guitar it's just you driving along the superchargers and dream weaver is playing in the background <laughs> it would it would have to be a short or something because you can't you get copyrighted but man what a great you know just uh scene that's going to be to pull up to a an, a proper supercharger it uh it looked like a, in concept an interesting design it looked like it had solar panels on the top of a container and then you've got batteries and a DC charger. It sounds like a cool idea. And then in practice, it turns out maybe uh, less than so. Yeah, you know, um, I've come across some really cool new concepts for chargers that I've never seen before. Or I guess I should say that I've never had to utilize before. And it's, um, it's a testament to the efforts that are being put into access to supercharging, to DC fast charging. And yeah. it's great. Um, execution uh, still needs work. And that's okay. It's okay to say that. But the, the first issue was actually on the way up on these two chargers. They're from a company called Freewire. Now, Freewire, unfortunately, went bankrupt. Yeah. So these charging units... Um, they're kind of being serviced by a third party, which means they're being maintained, um, which is good. But 
any issues that need to be like corrected in software or even potentially hardware, it's not happening. So in the case of the Cybertruck, these uh, free wire units don't, they don't want to work with the Cybertruck. These units are made for off-grid or power-constrained communities where it literally has a humongous battery in it. And what it does is throughout the day, it's charging that battery so that when a car comes, you can get up to 200 kilowatts on this thing, which is incredible. Yeah. Um, and basically, as that battery depletes, it you know starts to slow down the charge, and then it just pulls from whatever grid it has uh, to recharge itself. The BC Hydro units that I'm dealing with right now are a similar concept, but they're just straight up generator run. So they're natural gas or propane. Uh, I believe it's actually true propane that they're using. But these, it's a, basically a manufactured unit that's dropped off somewhere and it's all built into a container. It's brilliant. It's uh, a 50 and a 25 kilowatt charger. And basically that, that propane generator um, supplies all the power needed to feed these things when they're activated. And by limiting it to 50 kilowatts and 25 kilowatts, they don't have to have a huge battery bank like I thought they did. Um, but actually, as it turns out, um, you know, the solar panels on top are just to run the batteries that maintain the controllers. And they've even got their own little generators for those. And it's just a really good concept. Um, the problem is twofold. Number one, if you are in need of one of these chargers, that means you are somebody, you are somewhere very, very remote. <laughs> There's no backup. Number two, um, these just deployed. So like less than a month, these have been online. And I believe the one I was at first was two weeks into operations. So they're just now learning some of the downfalls uh, or some of the shortcomings that need to be addressed. And unfortunately it was at my expense. So, yeah, I'm sure you're one of the first people to ever use the thing. Yeah, not too many people have um, gotten a chance to use them yet. I did see some successful charges on PlugShare with a couple of them, which is great. Um, but man, it has been an absolute nightmare for me, um, only because I'm trying to go so far and it's my only option. So, you know, the first charger, essentially what happened is you have two routes to go north or south. Uh, up here in the Yukon to get back to civilization. And they basically go around them a big mountain. Okay. The one route is kind of littered a bit with 50 kilowatt uh, flow chargers. And then those two free wires that don't work. Um, and this other route just became possible because of these new units. And it shows it would be faster to do that. And it should be faster to go that way. So we said, heck, it's going to be interesting to see how this works out. And it did not work out, unfortunately. Charger number one, I'm pulling in, admiring freaking bison, herds of bison in the most spectacular place you could imagine. And I pulled in at 5%, go to the charger. They've got really nice instructions, very easy to follow, how to fire up the generator, all this stuff. And then make sure you connect to the Wi-Fi. Well, here's problem number one. The Wi-Fi is password protected and there's no password anywhere. Okay. Problem number two, there's no cell phone service. That's kind of a problem. Uh, problem number three, the lodge that's hosting this site, um, they charge you to use their Wi-Fi because they're so remote uh, and they don't know much about the unit. So long story short, after paying for Wi-Fi, I was able to contact customer support because it's not initiating. It's going through this test cycle. And as soon as the test cycle is done, nope, won't send a charge. Everything shuts down. So I get a hold of support. And mind you, in the lobby, I have Wi-Fi. I cannot get anywhere close to where the actual charging unit is and hold this Wi-Fi call. Yeah, uh, it's, so, it's amazing how dependent we are on the technology. And then when the technology isn't there, like in theory, it, it was a great plan. It, it was, yep. uh, you know, new chargers, they should work. It would all be connected. It, it would, even though it's longer in distance, it would be shorter in charge time. 
Uh, so it was all laid out. And then, I mean, that's part of the exploration. That's part of blazing the trail. Um, in some cases you, uh, you know, you, you leave, you leave charging that didn't used to exist. And in other cases, I think you bring, uh, and magnify and highlight where infrastructure just needs to be improved. And, um, you know, this will just be an example. This company will be better for it. They'll improve on it. You know, maybe Tesla will be like, all right, that's embarrassing. Let's just pop a supercharger somewhere. And, it's yeah. uh and to BC Hydro's credit, I don't this is not a smash fest. Um, you know, they they're doing great things to try to make these types of things possible. This is very mission centric. They're doing the right stuff. Um, they've reached out to me and asked for uh some details and feedback so we can so they can try to address this issue, figure out what's happening. So they're they're actively trying to fix this. I want to be very clear about that. They're not dumping and you know ghosting the site so the after so so basically you know i'm watching my charge go from five percent to four percent three percent until i'm at zero i'm at zero and i cannot get this charger activated so in an hour and a half of this pure frustration and panic like uh you know i i finally had to walk away, get the F-800 out, fire up the Starlink, and have access to the outside world. Um, I could not let Raphael, who was an hour and a half behind me, know what was happening so he could slow down and try to conserve, go to a different charger. Um, so he pulled in, uh, and my excitement was also met with terror because I was afraid he, too, was going to be stranded. The good news is we were able to get his to charge, and I daisy-chained off of his truck till I could get to a percent high enough that this charger would then send the juice. And it seemed like it was going to be just, I didn't have enough voltage. It was too low voltage for these generator and units. The next charger, same issue. So this I've, is now- I've heard this talked about before on the cyber truck. And uh, did you have to, if you daisy chained off the back of Raphael's, did he have to stop charging so you could get some charge or it could do it? So I've, I've heard that when it's plugged in to DC charging, it can't, the outlets don't work, but is that not the case? It does. That's not the case. It, it almost the case it's AC charging. That's the issue when AC charging is happening and Wes um, engineer at Tesla, he made a post about why uh, yeah. to describe the situation. But when you're level two charging or plugged into an outlet, um, it will not also allow you to run the outlets in the truck when you're DC charging. No problem. It'll run them. It does have a limitation that's not listed or automatically restricting yet. So example, I can't pull 32 amps out of Raphael's truck while this while he's charging, but I was able to pull something like 20 amps, 16 amps without it resetting every time. So there is a limitation to how much power it'll output while charging, but it does work. So and- save my bacon. And shout out to Wes because uh, I was uh, able to actually meet him for the first time yesterday at Unplug Tesla uh, or Unplug Performance um, at at a Tesla event there that uh, they just had for their Fremont opening. And he was great. Uh, He was absolutely just down to earth, like had a great conversation talking about different things. And I love that, that he's engaged on social media and and doing these posts and explaining things. Uh, So shout out to him for, um, you know, when you have access to an engineer at that level, who is engaged with the community. I mean, you can't ask for anything better than that. You got to love that about him. I absolutely. And I don't want to draw the parallels, but ever since Elon Musk did purchase Twitter, now X, um, it seems that there is, there has been a much more openness to public communication from you know officers of the company to the general public, which has been a huge plus for everybody in the community. So, yeah, absolutely. And Wes is is the real deal. He's a cool dude. I don't know if most people realize this, but he's like one of the original Tesla employees. <laughs> like, yeah. Like you wouldn't know it talking to him. He's just a dude, right? And that's but, what's cool about him. I was shocked to see how young he looked. Uh, and he, he rolled up in a cyber truck, like with a bike on the back, you know, uh, upgraded tires. You could tell he'd been using this thing. It had not been a, a yeah. pavement princess at all. And uh, it, it was it was really cool. And I think that sometimes companies shy away from letting people uh, post and because 
it's a double-edged sword, right? We want to hear from yep. them. We want to hear the thoughts. We want to hear these things. And But then you get the other side, which is the criticism, where if they give a date or an aspiration and then somebody holds it to that and then they continually refer back to, well, you said this. And like, well, you know, at the time that was our intention or that's what we were shooting for. And you don't know what obstacles are going to come up or you don't know what's going to change in the meantime. But uh, it is a double-edged sword because on one hand, we're, we're, we're pounding our fist, you know, engage with us and tell us. And then when they do... Uh, we use it against them. So there's a lot of companies that don't just don't say anything or they give you, you know, kind of a generic uh, kind of idea. So um, I, I love that that they're out there kind of engaging and just putting it out there, even if they get mocked for it later. And, you know, someone someone gets upset about timing. We all know the jokes, you know, on the on the Two timing. Weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So it's but it's fine. I think it's even part of I think it's even part of the lore. Right. Like, go ahead and give me a date. I know you're not going to hit it. But, you know, you are going to do it in half the time you would have otherwise if you didn't give that unrealistic aspiration. And sometimes you do hit it. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I'm I'm good with it. But I know a lot of people, uh, a lot of people just like to be negative in general. So that's uh, that's life for you, man. That's that's the the unsocial part of social media, I think. And um, that's what makes these in-person events so great is that you get to really see real people, not people behind a keyboard that post about tesla and have never been in one or you know to them it's just a money-making mechanism and if if the money's not coming then they're all of a sudden you know a different attitude about it yeah yeah it's uh it's definitely a net benefit i think uh for all of us what's also cool too though so i've been in northern canada for every bit of two weeks at this point and Everything is powered by Starlink. Um, I discovered that there's actually a fiber line that ends in Tuktoyuktuk, and they have taken that and run it down south, down the Dempster Highway. And uh, most businesses and individuals prefer Starlink over the fiber connection, which is pretty wild to me. And these BC hydro sites, these te- these uh, portable ones, they're powered by Starlink, right? Like Starlink continues to be such an important tool to society and technology today. It's it's fascinating to see all the use cases as they come alive with you know electronics being dropped off in a parking lot somewhere, and that's how these charging units communicate with the network and you know allow you to charge. It's just it's cool to see all the all the ways that we're utilizing this awesome technology. It's pretty remarkable. And it's going to be fun to see what happens 10 years from now, 20 years from now, when there's all these, you know, low latency satellites and you're not having to use fiber at all. And the idea of a fiber line will seem as archaic to us as like a landline phone. The, you know, it'll, you'll just open a device and it will link to this satellite anywhere you want to go, anywhere you want to be. And you don't have to worry about pulling up to a Wi-Fi password thing. You'll just, every car will have an antenna on top the way that, you know, cars have FM antennas on top today, you know, or, or XM yeah. series sat- satellite, you know, it'll just be the same thing. It'll just be this connected thing we take for granted. And we'll look back at these days and tell stories of the old Victrola and that we had to search different Wi-Fi networks and go into a Starbucks and beg and try to get the password from the the local tire shop or whatever it was you know the the moose lodge that you pulled into and uh, (laughs) with the bear skin hanging on the wall and whatever else was going on yeah Yeah. and we've got t-mobile right with their uh, agreement and commitment with starlink that's coming online very soon natively on your cell phone connected to satellite that's crazy it's amazing yeah it's it just like it just opens up possibilities. It connects the rest of the unconnected world, right? It's just next level stuff that's going to change lives. Like almost everything that's going on in, in the parallel companies of Elon Musk for whatever reason, right? Which is pretty cool. Yeah, and I think there's uh, just different personalities prefer different things. Some people don't like change. They want predictability and, and safety and security. And you need to have some degree of that, especially in certain yeah. fields and in certain infrastructure projects. You know, utility companies, hospitals, uh, emergency control centers, those things need to be tried and true, reliable, hardwired things that exist. And But then there's the fun technology. And part of the fun is the um, the early stuff where uh, things don't always work as planned. And then you get to play with it and learn about it and iterate and evolve. And 
you know, you go from from the the big brick cell phone to the thing that, you know, my my watch can literally make phone calls and text me and I can be walking around with no cell phone on me at all. And the, you know, one day that will be how we see satellites. One day EV batteries will be miniaturized and, you know, semi-solid state, then solid state and drives like you're on today that can be stressful. It'll go five, 600 miles, no problem. Maybe, maybe even more than that. You know, it's, it's, um, and I think people don't always understand it's an iterative process and we're at the early yeah. stages of that, you know? Look at uh, look at SpaceX too, right? We just heard from Elon the other day about um, the timeline for a Starship, like yeah. that, like open your eyes, like holy cow, we're really there. And then you think about how scary a prospect of not just launching humans in this new system, but the system that's required to take them to Mars and land on Mars and be able to leave Mars and come like. Like we're we, dude, the, we are living in the future. I, every year it seems like that's a, a fair statement, and it just continues to be. And I love it; it's amazing. Yeah, I think it's a special mind that can see that far into the future and has the discipline to go through the steps it takes to reach it. Because you're yeah. talking about a two year process before the window and the the things are aligned in just the right way. The Starship can even get up there and try that first landing, and then it's going to be another two years after that before they can try again. And right. so, depending on you know the goal is to get it to keep keep trying now and getting things perfected so that that test launch can land itself and then following that up with some improvements and then maybe a human gets out there but if if it yeah. fails somebody will criticize it and in the meantime you know they'll keep working and one day they're going to land and then everybody's going to act like this miraculous thing you know has occurred and not remember the hard work and the in the decades of effort that went into achieving it um and so i think that is uh that is just the difference in humanity and personality and i and i think it's uh it's okay. It's fine. You know, some, some people will always be that way. And I choose to, to be the maybe overly optimistic and in the naive person that just, I'd, I'd rather uh, have a dream fall short than never dream at all. You know, hundred percent, you know, it's the village of engineers at these companies that have to listen to this crap and still come to work with a smile and an attitude and that, yeah. that is there to succeed. You know, some people just, they struggle with other people being happy. They can't stand it. And that's what haters are, man. They just, they want you to know why you're an idiot for yeah. whatever their belief is on it. And they can't help themselves because they're miserable. And it it looks foreign to see somebody happy with something. Yeah, I, I rarely come across someone that's giving me a lot of hate and vitriol who is uh, in general happier than I am or is doing more with their time than I am. And it's uh, nope. always um, eye opening to me. And I'm just like, you, you know, I'll I'll be like, why are you commenting on like, why are you you know, it's fine. Like, I'm not I'm not rolling into the, the Corvette Club page to throw hate. I love the Corvette, too. Like I, your choice of the Corvette doesn't affect me or, you know, I'll get comments on my weight or I'll get comments on uh, of being a Ford person. I'll get all kinds of weird comments. And I'm like, like, what's that about, man? Like if I if I had if if I had you know, social media feelings, you'd, you'd be hurting them right now. Like, what's the deal? I, I've, yeah. I've learned to separate those things though. Cause the real life people in the social media, the keyboard people aren't, they're not the same. I would bet no. that when they're away from the keyboard, they're not even the same. I totally agree. Cause nobody, nobody talks to people like that in a social setting. That's acceptable. Yeah. Because even the, even their friends who are lumping on would correct them. Right. Like that's not how we are as humans. We, we have this nature of wanting to help. It's just built into us. Even, even grumpy old dudes that hate out the world, they'll grudgingly come over because they can't help their desire to know that they're the one who can help your situation. Yeah. We're human. But people just, man, they can't stand it. Other people being happy in their stuff. You know, for people who are dreaming of wanting to do, you know, YouTube or be, you know, on X or whatever, like that's a strong lesson that you got to work on now is accepting that some people just aren't happy people and it has no bearing on who you are as a person. And doesn't have to affect you in any way that matters. Because at the end of the day, 
whoever the heck they are, wherever the heck they are. They're not the people that matter. And that's a hard thing to learn when you get called all kinds of obscenities relentlessly. Um, But just continue to remind yourself, the more haters, the better, because those haters in their hate are paying you because they're driving engagement. Because every time they tell you, wow, um, that's not a real truck, they're also telling the algorithm that this not real truck is really engaging (laughs) more eyes (laughs) you can tap i'm telling you this right now i i did it twice now i tapped into the truck people on instagram just by happen happenstance and it freaking exploded and it was amazing and it was nothing but the most ignorant stuff you've ever heard some of the most disgusting things you could ever read and i just sit back and laugh and it's just a beautiful thing because they're just helping to grow my channel. No press is bad press. Even the stuff that you think is bad, there's 10 other people that are looking at that who are interested and they just got visibility to it. And you got to keep that in mind. Yeah, it's been interesting as a, as a small channel and, and someone that's just kind of figuring it out as, as I go and stumbling through it. Um, I mean, I'd love to hear like when you get back and you see some of the uh, analytics of these videos, like where the views are coming from and what the percentages are like. And, um, you know, I, I ran into um, I, I did a, a random Volvo video when I was out in in Carolina with the Kim Power team just because it was my rental car. And I'm like, I'm going to throw this thing together. And for some weird reason, it went crazy in the Philippines. And uh, someone messaged me that in the Philippines, they'll find a video and they'll circulate it to learn English from. Um, And and so I thought that was interesting. And then I just did one. And this one makes more sense than the Volvo one because they don't even sell the Volvo near as I can tell in in the Philippines. This one, I just did the uh, VinFast VF9 and uh, it went crazy in Vietnam and uh, which makes sense, you know, but I've got. Yeah you know, it's coming up on four or 5,000 views, which for me is huge. I usually get a few hundred, maybe a thousand views. Um, and it, so positive works too. Um, but you know, the more as people, it's weird because people will comment negatively, which increases the views, which then gets the positive people. So originally the VinFast thing had like only 25% likes and now it's up to 90% likes. Cause all of the, yep. the people with pride from Vietnam wanted to see one of their own. And I think yep. that is what you experience when someone with a Tesla or someone with a Ford or someone you want, you want to, and in this case, just somebody with an EV vehicle up in the middle of the wilderness, you want to see some, one of your own out there, succeeding and i think it it is a weird ebb and flow where you come across the two different extremes of of people that are just embracing and and part of it and then people that are just viscerally against it and have no idea why they are that's right we're all in tribes but every layer up you go the tribe is bigger so example um you're wearing a ford hat i'm sitting in a tesla cyber truck you would say you're in a Ford tribe. I would say I'm in a Tesla tribe, regardless of the fact that I love all cars. And then regardless of the fact that you love all cars, we are in those tribes. But you know what other tribe we're in? We're in an EV tribe. Yeah, We're in this bigger community of EV enthusiasts. And then a step up from there, we're in a automotive tribe, yeah. automotive enthusiasts. So it just continues to expand from there. And that's how we get. That's how you reach new audiences is uh, through these un- sometimes unfortunate but uh, yeah. necessary means of evil to reach the bigger tribe. The the anthropology of that is awesome. There's a great author, Simon Sinek, who um, I, I have gotten the privilege to work with in my, part of my leadership journey in the past. And uh, he's got a whole thing about that tribalism, how it's like. Hey, you're from your town. What part of the town are you from? Hey, you're from the same state. Hey, you're from the same country. And as you travel, you know, um, you start to kind of that tribe gets bigger. Um, and I think that's, yeah, that's the goal of this kind of stuff. Make the tribe bigger, you know? Yeah. Like when you're at Disney world and the guest that they bring on stage says he's from Texas. And then you hear all the Texas people like, Oh yeah, me too. It's like a humongous state. (laughs) They don't know each other. Like yeah, Texas, man. They're proud of it. Same thing happens with sports teams. You know, you get yeah. someone from Alabama and you start hearing Roll Tide or you start hearing Hook 'em Horns or you, right? You just, uh, yeah, that stuff is great, man. And I, I, I definitely dig on that. 
Well, I'm, I'm uh, coming up against the time here on the clock, but uh, man, I appreciate you getting on and giving us an update. We saw you out there and I'm glad you didn't end up stranded. Uh, so love seeing you uh, on the road again, charged up. Where, where's Raphael at this point? He's, uh, He's on his way to the last non-Tesla charger on, on the journey. I am one charger behind him uh, because of my 18 hour uh, delay. Yeah. Thanks to, but just a reminder, if you want to take adventures like this, you've got to have Starlink with you. Turn down for what is giving away a Starlink on September 21st. Yes. And details of that in the description or posted below. Don't forget, take advantage of this opportunity to win a free Starlink like the one that is professionally mounted, might I add. <laughs> On the dash of my truck, and uh, you can have one too for free. Thanks to Turn Down for Watt. So that's awesome. Well, thanks everybody for joining us and listening in. Uh, like and subscribe to the channels, and let's get you into a Starlink of your own and adventures of your own. We will see you on the next one, everybody. And thanks again, Justin. Peace out. Thanks for tuning in to Turn Down for Watt. Make sure you're subscribed with your notifications on to tune in to more EV news and updates. Want to win a Starlink? Follow the directions in the description below. See you next time.